Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Ricardo Gralhois. I'm a volunteer at Joana de Angeles, Spiritual Society Jazz. And I study this, this theme of vi virtues and vices according to the Spiritist doctrine and to the gospel of Jesus. And I'm really happy this uh, study was really uh, good for me. Uh, I, I've learned a lot from it and I feel like a little bit, little bit a better person. And I really hope you can do the same for you all. And also good evening for those who are watching me on YouTube. I hope you all enjoy. And so to get started, I want to practice this very small meditation. I want to ask you to ask yourself this question. Can you achieve pure happiness without detaching yourself from your vices? If you would like to use the chat or thumbs up, thumbs down. My chat also has disappeared. Let's see if I can find it here. Okay. Was, where, where, was there, I, I don't see any answers. Is this a yes or no? Only a few people have camera on. I can see Bruno. Okay, I see a thumbs up. <laughs> so 100% of thumbs up. Oh, Katya, haven't seen Katya in a long time. Okay, oh, there is a, it depends. I don't think so. So there is a, okay, so there is half and half then. So, so let's ask again this question. Can you achieve pure happiness? Not just being happy, but the pure and eternal happiness that is the goal of the immortal, immortal spirits, which we all are, without detaching ourselves from our vices, our bad tendencies. That would be, did anybody change? Bruno, is still a yes? Maybe you'll. Oh, it's a no. No, so, we cannot. So maybe, maybe, maybe there was a different interpretation. Now the next question is: Now can you achieve pure happiness by transforming your vices into virtues? Yes. Okay. Okay. Very good. So I hope that when you ask yourself this question you had a chance to think about your vice, vices and think about how they affect your life, how they stop you from achieving even the happiness that we can uh, be, uh, we, we are able to feel in our level of evolution. So this is how we're gonna work to try to help us to develop this question more into our understanding, into our hearts, and then maybe into our will. We're going to talk about virtues and vices according to the Spiritist doctrine. What, what is the root? What do they mean? Are they good or bad? Then the same thing for, uh, sorry, I mentioned vices and passions. And then the same thing for the virtues. And finally, we're going to work on the parable of the wheat and the tares. As uh, we need the interpretation of developing virtues at the same time as we have vices. And help us to overcome and transform these vices into virtues so then we can start to work on our happiness. I don't mean necessarily start, but continue to work towards our pure internal happiness. Okay, so um, I'm so sorry we got those uh, technicalities in the beginning. Now the next exercise, it was gonna be interactive, but I realized that we're gonna be then uh, be out of time later. So just when you look at this, these very good looking horses, maybe you just can do in your mind, think about what do they, um, what kind of attributes these horses, or at least this main one that's standing uh, comes to your mind. And specifically in regards to the use for, for humankind. To me, what comes to mind is the power. Like this, this is such a, such a strong horse. So some people are nodding. And they are useful, and especially before the invention of the cars, 
um, they were very useful for centuries to help men and women move from one location to another faster, using less energy, um, less effort. And so this is uh, in question 908 of the Spirit's book by Alan Kardec. The Spirit says to Kardec that passions are like a horse that is positive or useful when under control, by dangers when untamed. So the same thing for the passions. They are, use, they are useful for us when they are under control, like trained, like we, we can train horses, but dangerous. They, call, they can cause harm to ourselves and to others. So Joana de Angelis, uh, spirit mentor of our house in the book, After the Storm, she, she says that the power of the motion which propels man towards passion proceeds from his inner spiritual being. This is an amazing perspective that Spiritism um, offers, especially in connection to the transpersonal psychology that is shown that the source of the thinking and the source of the feeling is in the spirit, which means before we were born and after this body dies that we are um, living with now, this cloth, temporary cloth that we have, we are still gonna be able to feel and to think. So the feelings, the emotions start in the spirit and they propel men towards passion, which can be thought of emotion applied into something. Like I can have a passion for a soccer team, for my nation, like patriotism, a passion for somebody, my husband or wife, my kids, uh, for a friend. It could be a passion for uh, doing things that are illegal. It could be, a, a, there is such a, a, a broad variety of passions and they're all driven by the emotions. They're empowered by the emotions and proceed from the spiritual being. And then it is transformed into physical reaction <clears throat> either raising men and women to the pinnacles of nobility when properly used like the horse or making him and her descend into the pits of vice and degradation. So depending on the, the usage, once the passion goes from the spirit to the perispirit into the a body, a central nervous system, our brain, and our nerves and our glands and all these electrical and chemical connections that makes us feel those emotions, especially regarding the conditions. It could be healthy conditions or life events. Then they could drive us to elevate ourselves or to degrade, to create some sort of debit towards our consciousness. And in the Spirit's book, question 907, when Kardec is saying, so if the passions are rooted in nature, and when we think about that, passions are rooted in nature. So like a tree, like a horse, uh, like our physical bodies, is something natural. It is God's creation. Are they bad in themselves? So if it's God's creation, it cannot be bad. So the answer is no. They are abuse or excess. Only that one is bad. So this is very important because when we are practicing our inner reform, we understand that the, the part of that that is part of nature, it's good for our use. And then comes the part that we make the choice in how we use those special symbols. When we abuse, when we excess, exceed, then we are making bad usage and then they can be bad for us. So the principle of all passions have been given to human beings for their own good. And these passions may score them to accomplish great things. So as the example of Louis Pasteur, um, the, this scientist that was researching for the cure for many diseases and discovered penicillin, he applied to himself, he did the experiment. We can only think that this very noble spirit who was here on earth, I don't know, like 200 years ago or something. Um, what a passion 
that man had for, for the truth, for knowledge, and for the humankind by risking himself and believing his own experiment. Um, this is an example of using perhaps his unconditional love or his passion for truth <clears throat> to accomplish great things. And even today, we still, uh, many of us have escaped from serious diseases and even death thanks to this effort of this person. Now, so if the passions can be good or bad, depending on the, uh, of, of the way we use them, well, the vices, we know that they are, <laughs> they are not good, right? May feel good, but a temporary good, be, meaning that we have a second gain. We have a, a gain from being to a vice. And here, the definition of vice is more broad. It's not necessarily uh, addition to drugs or alcoholism, uh, but any, any passion that's non-regulated, that's the result of abuse, may create those vices. In other words, sometimes spiritist doctrine uses the bad tendencies. We have a tendency to do, to act in a certain way, starting by feeling a certain way and then acting by either speaking, thinking, or acting. Um, so if it is important for us to, we want to be happy and we want to find in these vices, these bad tendencies, how to uh, eliminate or to transform them, then it is important to find the root cause, right? Especially for uh, those uh, scientists and engineers that like to discover the root cause. But sometimes um, we only look outside of us. We forget to look at our, our inner self, the root cause of our own iniquities. And the spirits will say to Kardec, if we study all vices and we'll see that selfishness or egotism is at the root of them all. It is also the worst of the vices. Is once we practice the, this emotion of putting ourselves above others, our needs above others, it is uh, a dangerous vice in the root of all others. This is the teachings of the spirits. We're gonna see an example later. So we should use all of our efforts to eliminate selfishness from our psychological structure so we can help ourselves to free ourselves from all of our vices. That's the plague of the human society. And once we do that within ourselves, we are going to reach a point that our institutions are gonna change. They are already changing um, our laws, the way, the culture, um, even language, everything is going to change once we learn to eradicate selfishness from our hearts, from our minds. And, and this is, uh, in a high level, in a more broad level, the construction of the kingdom of heaven on earth for all of us, a kingdom of peace and justice and love for all. So here is an example, so we can finish block one. I chose that because uh, I participated in a private group of study of you know, reform. And this was one of, the, uh, one of the vices that our group wanted to know more about. And Joana de Angelis um, says in the book, Existential Conflicts, and we can think uh, uh, as, like if, it's, if, if the source of a vice is in a passion, which comes from an emotion. Sometimes passions and emotions are interchangeable. Sometimes they have two different meanings. Um, it is easy to understand that the, the source, it is something that's good for us. We have a need for resting. A divine law applied to all beings of the universe is the law of work. And the law of work, specifically in the material world, has to be regulated by another law, if you can call that a law, the law of rest. Or we can also say rest is a part of the law of work. Uh, we need to rest. If we do work hard in a day, we need to rest at night to recompose for the next, next day because our body needs to rest. Our minds also need to rest. Sometimes we need to take a vacation to renew our thoughts, to act differently, to come up with newer ideas. And, but when we abuse, and then we were talking about the excess, excesses, when we abuse the the need for rest, then we could develop this vice of laziness. 
And Joanna Jansen says that usually starts with egotism or selfishness. So those people who suffer from this vice only feel good when they are highlighted. So being the center of attention in the positive way. Although they do not have the skillful resources for the actions they should perform. So as for an example, um, this man who suffers from the suffer from the egotism vice and goes to start his professional career and he thinks himself so high that he can only be the best performer in the team and in the company. And then comes the time for his performance evaluation. He receives a very negative performance from his supervisor, from the team, and he faces this shock of perception. It doesn't mean they are right about him, because sometimes the whole group could have a different perception or expectation. And sometimes one person is different than the rest of the group, and that person maybe is really ahead of his or her time. Uh, but there was a difference in, in perception, and for him to continue performing that work, um, he needs to use that experience to learn with the team and with his supervisor to be able to communicate better expectations, or maybe he was really performing badly and he needs to learn to perform differently. But then th the shock of the, his perception with others comes with the, it could come with a choice for learning or a choice of rebelling. And then that person, if it happens multiple different occasions, may start to become lazy, not wanting to work. So he doesn't have to face that painful experience, pain in the ego, not physical pain, but the pain in the spirit, in the ego, that then can become a pain in the body and become lazy, not work anymore, and become a burden for society. And Joanna Jones recommends um, there is a lot of different types of things, of therapies to release from this vice. And as the source is in, in the egotism, then practice humbleness and practice unconditional love. I don't want to be a burden to society, so I want to contribute to help. I need to learn to love myself because laziness is connected to, at the same time that is egotism, there is also the complex of inferiority which is, is another thing, uh, another result of, of the same source, uh, the egotism. And learn to forgive because that resentment, it's a blocker to progress and can also cause uh, physical diseases if you're not healed. So now let's go, we have an example of a vice and studying the cause and consequences. Whoever wants to uh, with more about it, here's a reference, Existential Conflicts by Joanna Janges, the Valdo Franco, chapter two. So now let's go to virtues. We talk about horses, the same thing a horse can be untamed or under control. And so back to the same question, when the passion seems to be good or bad. So just to complement our previous discussion, when we use our passions to be closer to our, our animalistic nature, like our very primary instincts. Even Givaldo Franz says from here, down from the heart down, or below the heart, then they don't help us to progress, even intellectually or morally. So it carries us away from our spiritual nature because our animalistic nature is a need for our progress. But we will reach a point, and this point is in the when we achieve the perfection, which comes with the pure happiness, we will not need our physical bodies, the animalistic nature anymore. We will be able to be in control of our destinies and of our progress. So on the opposite side, every feeling raises men from animal nature demonstrate dominance of their spiritual side over the animal side. We can foresee the future and spiritism is giving us this opportunity to see this future. As human beings, once we, most of us understand our spiritual nature, not just intellectually, but also feeling like we feel like we are immortal spirits. So we develop that virtue of feeling like the immortal spirit. And we feel like children of God, this infinitely just and love and wise 
a knowledgeable father, mother, that we feel we are a present to the universe. And that helps us to feel our existential purpose, to feel happy with life and happy with the challenge that we have. And this is a good consequence of practicing the, our, the spirit view, the view that we are not just a physical body. Life is not short, life is infinite. So what is, if we talk about the, the, the roots of the vices, then the most admirable of all the virtues entails the sacrifice of self-interest. So it's right the opposite. Once we abuse our self-interest, and we can think that ego, uh, perhaps we can analyze as being a creation of God for men and women, our personas. We need our personas to evolve too. It's a very complex psychological structure that helps us to develop knowledge together with the other, other passions and other emotions. Um, the problem is not having an ego. The problem is to abuse. So it's to think we are better than what we really are or less than what we really are. So those could be consequences of abuse of the ego. And so practicing sacrifice self-interest for the good of others, this is the most admirable of the virtues. It's a different word for the sublime charity that Jesus preached, that Paul spoke about. Different words, unconditional love, but the same idea. Remember in the lecture of uh, Magdalene, the sublime spirit, one of the greatest examples in a reform at Jesus' time, she learned to change all of her vices by practicing sacrificial love. So she found this new son within herself, that's our inner God, our inner Christ, potential Christ, yet um, inner God with lower G. And she used that to eliminate her new pathway thanks to Jesus' teachings that she followed to the rest of her life, practicing unconditional love. And finally, an, an example um, of virtue. Let me do a time check. I got 24 here. So I do recommend checking the, the story. It's really inspiring. Marcel was a, a child known as child number four in this provincial asylum, eight, around eight years old. He had a lot of physical deformities and like his legs would touch his, his neck and he was skinny. You can almost see his bones coming out of his skin and his pain. He had a lot of pain in his whole body. His family didn't follow up through, just, they just put him there and wouldn't come to visit much. And doctor, whenever he had some time, he would go and read for Marcel. And he was surprised that it was such an intelligent kid with such a good heart, full of benevolence, patience, and resignation. He could understand. And spiritism helps us to understand divine justice uh, because this was uh, both a, a consequence of his, uh, not his recent, but some like far remote previous life. It was not purely expiation. He actually, he, he actually passed away at very young age, and he came back to talk about it, and to uh, to Kardec and, and and the team that was developing spiritist doctrine, and he he said that he had already expiated. He, he had been a rich, very rich and handsome man, uh, with a lot of people who were just adulating him. Hope I'm saying the word right. Um, he was very vain, and he felt guilty, and he had wrongs many people forgetting God. So he expiated uh, that life with terrible sufferings. And he, after many reincarnations, he asked for opportunity to, because, of, because he did a proper use of his expiation, he learned to endure pain. So he wanted to come to help inspire others around him to endure pain and love God. Look at the look at the amazing example of uh, sacrifice of the self interest. So there's this story where he he was suffering a lot. He asked the doctor to give him more medicine, and he begged to God. So let me read this. I begged to God to give me the strength to avoid disturbing the other patients who are near me. It is often impossible for me to help 
doing so. The spills make me sleep, and while I sleep, I disturb no one. This is such an inspiring story. I really want to, to be like Marcel one day, to be able to endure pain and to care about, more about the others than myself. And this is a great example of sublime virtue. So we talk about vices and passions, their root and consequences. Unfortunately, we have to go very quickly about it. And now let us help uh, to look at the gospel of Jesus Christ and to learn how to transform those vices and virtues into a parable of the root and the cares. I recommend checking this video on YouTube by Adilic Sequeira Filho in the FEEMT Play channel, Parabola do Jogo de Trigo, and then number, number seven. It's uh, in Portuguese. Um, so I hope it's also in the book uh, of the Parabolas Therapeuticas. Hopefully soon we have a translation to English for those who cannot understand Portuguese. But here we have some, some of the of this interpretation. So Jesus told the disciple in all of us, the kingdom of heaven is like a man. So let's just start the kingdom of heaven. We could see in a broad way like peace on earth, but we should actually start thinking as peace within ourselves. So this blissful state of being connection with God, being one with God. And man in the story here is the Lord, amen, the Lord of the field. Jesus didn't use that word I'm saying right now. Uh, we can see as God, the creator. So that's the symbol for this parable. So a man who sowed good seed in his field. So Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven, which happens within our hearts, which happens through the consequence of developing those emotions to their most sublime manifestation. Started with God planting in each one of us the seeds of those virtues. So as we study, the emotions are part of God creation. So, and emotions are neutral. They're not good or bad. It depends on how we use them. So we all have the seeds of the virtues in our hearts. But this is already a good start because you may think, oh man, I wish I had some discipline. Well, you have the seed of discipline in your heart. Now you have to develop that. Perhaps looking for the what is the feeling that drives the disciplined people? What is the emotion? And then use that emotion yourself towards a positive goal. Choosing a good strategy. So while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the weeds. So sometimes the word is tares or darno. Uh, and here, the, in this, uh, from the new international version is weeds. So while everyone is sleeping, uh, the symbol here, we can see as us when we are sleeping to our spiritual nature that we talked about. So when we are sleeping or unaware or unconscious or negligent or indifferent to our spiritual nature, being spiritist or not, being religious or not, is not a matter of what we believe, but how we use that belief into our lives. So when we are sleeping, then who is this enemy? Ourselves. So this, our sleepy selves, our spiritual sleepy selves. So then we develop those weeds. We start to abuse those emotions and passions. We start to use more than we need. And we start to plant those vices in our hearts. And we can also look at this not just as in a single existence, but in a, uh, a plethora of previous existences. So here's a little example. The power struggles in the decision because we are faced with constant opportunities to do good, to develop virtues. So we can do good or iniquity in those circumstances, depending on how we use these emotions. And sometimes we have some enemies that help us to do iniquities, not do good. But the main enemy is us, especially our previous us. When we were more ignorant, more negligent, then we created those vices. And even though maybe today I want to do different, 
I want to be more uh, industrious, less lazy. And sometimes I still act lazy and weak. I wanted to be more uh, industrious. What is happening? Well, I have to overcome this vice. I have this previous law. Um, how many times I was lazy in the past or oh, whatever vice we are talking about. How many times I practiced that. So now it takes work to kind of clean up, clean up the, the, the spiritual vessel of our spirit um, and to, to renew it, to be a, a newer one so we can now fulfill the virtues we want to know. But there is also, I mean, I'm going to go fast uh, on this part. It, we could be influenced by our own bodies, our physical bodies, by the people who help form our characters, like our parents, teachers, family members, later, and the teenage friends and the media. And even nowadays, we're still influenced by people. And also, there, there are the inferior spirits, those who like the same vices that we have. So they want to explore us, so like in this picture, um, because of our vices. And there are also um, those who don't really like us, so they want to instigate our vices just because they want to see our suffering. So those are a lot of... Uh, could be those could be barriers for our execution of our goals and to develop those fortunes to achieve happiness. And Kardec asks, so if you have all these challenges, is the individual effort enough to vanquish bad tendencies? The answer is only a small effort. A little grain of mustard is needed. And what happens is sometimes we don't really have the will. And the spirit says, uh, we are only willing on our lips. We need to start to, to wheel in our hearts to really want to get rid of those uh, vices. And it's quite astonishing how few of us make any serious effort. But then if we if you don't have that will yet, can we ask for help? Yes. If we address a sincere prayer for such help to God, a spiritual mentor and other good spirits will come and help us. Because some of those, it is their duty, like our guardian angels. So back to this picture, then we have superior spirits, our guardian angels, uh, the, the mentors of the institutions that we work at. Every work has a mentor. Uh, God doesn't, let, doesn't leave any place, even if you look like a place that's really dark and appear to be abandoned, never is abandoned. There is always good spirits there working for the help of the people but always respecting them freely. And they will give us inspiration. We can meet them in our dreams. We can meet them in our meditation through thoughts that come to our minds. They are inspirational thoughts. And God has put in our conscience the divine law. So when we are faced with this choice of making good choices or wrong doings, we receive this conscientious alert that tells us what to do. So we should, do, we should listen to that. Okay, so back to the parable. So the enemy that we saw here, so weeds among the... And then the servants asked him, do you want us to go put them up? If you don't know, I don't know much about that. I had to like, search on YouTube. Uh, weeds and tear, they look a lot alike once they are like young, like uh, grass. They look a lot. So it is hard to separate them. Joy and trigger for those, uh, for those in Portuguese language. And, but when they grow up, they look different. And the servants were like, should we go and pull them up? And Jesus is talking about here a psychological phenomenon, especially us religious people, we do, we just try to, we just trying to suppress our bad emotions, try to repress, try to mask, create a mask of benevolence, of charitable. And Jesus is saying no. And going back to the parable, that's what the man answered. No, he answered. Because while you're pulling the weeds, you may approve the weeds with them. Because masking or repressing our vices do not change them. They will still stay there. So those who have uh, those more evident vices like in, in sexuality or in drinks or in, fo in food or in any kind of addictive drug, they may know this, that they repress, repress, repress. And then when since they haven't transformed them, when this opportunity to release becomes really strong, it looks like they cannot control. This is what many describe. And so Jesus' is teaching is let them both grow together until the harvest. So what is the harvest? What is the harvest? 
And here, this is a spiritist uh, and transpersonal interpretation for that. It's very different than we may hear outside of that. Um, so going back to our picture, we make choices, right? So in the past life, we make those choices between good and iniquities, building our, uh, our sum of our personas, which is start in the spirit, if you can say this way. And then when it comes, opportunity for harvest, which in one place we can, uh, we can say is the moment of death or after death. Once we make the harvest of all the good and all the iniquities that you sow, that we sow, now in the spiritual world, in the moment of death, we know how much did I harvest, how much good did I plant. And then spirit spirits come with us to help us to plan our next life based on the previous harvest. So based on the harvest, you need to have this type of trial or maybe avoid this type of trial for now. Uh, using what we have planted, for now starting a new opportunity, which is new incarnation. And then me in the present, I'm gonna go over very similar or new uh, power struggles, different opportunities for learning. And hopefully if I did learn, I'm gonna plant more good. And then comes the next harvest. However, as we are smart and we listen to St. Augustine, we should not. Um, I'm looking at the time now, uh, St. Bruno is like, oh my God. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna wrap it up. And I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna say uh, the very nice example I found for future lecture. Um, so um, we can do this harvest every night when we are doing the St. Augustine practice or in the morning, or even every, every after a, a task or a moment that we realize that hmm, my vice, my ego was manifesting right now in an abusive way, we can practice that analysis. And then we can that can become the harvest. So I don't need to wait for the end of my life for that. And here, a time I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds, so the vices. Because the weeds, uh, and, and, and the, the, the tares, they have like a, a fungi that create toxins to our body. So that's why Jesus used that because it was common back then. And even, even today, there's probably more technology to be able to separate tares from the, the weeds. Um, so Jesus didn't say to rip off the tares, to harvest, but then put in bundles to be burned. So now that we know that the source of devices is in the egotism or selfishness, burn means here transformation. It's not gonna transform those vices into virtues. By identifying that, in essence, that emotion is useful for me to progress, like the horse helped me move from uh, one point to another faster with less effort, and instead of repressing. And then gather the weeds and bring to my barn, this barn of happiness that we feel when we are doing our duties towards God, towards ourselves, and towards others. So, this is the example I want to suggest you to look at. Um, is the Fred Rogers. I think he's a great example of, uh, of virtue that was here among us. He had the, have you ever seen the show, the Mr. Rogers Neighborhood? Uh, he was teaching kids and adult, kids of all age, including adults, to be able to recognize their emotions, to express their emotions and to learn to manage them. So he, he taught on TV about kids handling with uh, parents' divorce or the death of a family member. Uh, so I do recommend you to look at his story and because of time, I'm going to recommend you to watch the video, but we're not gonna play right now. So it's in the, Fred Rogers testifies before the Senate Committee on Communication 69. Very nice uh, testimonial. Uh, they were cutting the budget and he was invited budget for the public broadcast services and he was invited to to help defend the cause and his his very short testimonial six or seven minutes really inspired the senator and he won they won the cause they they the budget was going to be cut in half into from 20 to 9 million and then they got 22 million and we can see he's a really uh, a noble soul not just by practicing, practicing virtues, but by also helping sowing the seeds in other people's hearts, especially when they're kids. 
very inspiring story. So tonight we talk about vices and passions. Learn that passion, the root of them is within divine creation to help us to progress faster. Otherwise we would be very slow and lazy. So emotions, they help us to move faster. Emotion, right? It's moving. And virtues is when we choose to use these emotions for a good cause and we sub make them more sublime, we purify these emotions, develop into high feelings, being uh, charity, sublime charity, or unconditional love or sacrifice of self interest. Those are the most precious uh, virtues we can develop. And finally, we look at the parable, many examples of how to transform. So, with that, we finish our study for the night. I apologize about this technicalities and the time. So let us now go to our final prayer. I want to ask you to go back to the second question. Can you achieve your happiness by transforming your vices and 